I really hate that I have to waste the first 30 seconds with a disclaimer, but it's really important. Do not contact anybody featured on Bearded Bully Busters Magic the Gathering Edition under any circumstances. If you're inclined to do your own amount of investigation, please do not engage these people. Take your screenshots, observe, and report. If you want to send screenshots anywhere to have a new candidate for Bearded Bully Busters Magic Edition, send it to Watsi Asked for this at gmail.com. If you so if you are so inclined to report any of these people on your own, the links will be in the description below. Sorry that episode two took a little bit longer, but the holidays and some new threats uh, kind of forced me to lay low for a little bit. And uh, basically, uh, some other bigger fish uh, became an issue, uh, one of which is uh, exposing pedophiles in the Magic the Gathering judge program, something that they refuse to address and refuse to take any responsibility for. More on that later. Now, this week, we have a batch of bullies that is just ripe for the busting. And I want to start with one that personally really pissed me off. And I want to get into our friend, um, well, our friend Michael a Albert. Uh, goes online uh, on under the Twitter handle Darth Mulver. Dug through my dead Twitter account, basically, we, um, Wisconsin Beard, which I haven't posted on in my, many months. This video, I think, was posted a year ago. Uh, dug through all of my Twitter accounts to use a video of my wife that I posted on my personal Twitter account as a threat. Make no mistake, this is a threat. When you dig so deep, through somebody's personal history to find videos of their wife and you post it, this is a threat. Uh, Mr. Alber also went to my business and went out of his way to leave a slanderous libel review. Owner of company, owner of company Jeremy Hambly was banned by Wizards of the Coast from attending sanctioned events for the company's games. The reason for the ban was constant sexual harassment. This is a lie. This is liable. This is slanderous. This is a direct effect to affect my business, my livelihood. Uh, harassment of cosplayers by Wizards of the Coast and its partners for over a year's time. Beware of the inv individual and this company. Here is his justification for posting my, a video of my wife. The video was publicly posted on his sock puppet account. What is with these people and sock puppet? It's not a sock puppet account. It is my personal account. One I do not advertise anywhere. If he makes the account private or removes it, I'll take down the video. Oh yeah, the aerial photo of his house was publicly posted on his wife's Facebook Nothing I've posted has violated his privacy. Oh, by the way, Michael, posting pictures of my home and then using your stalking of my wife's Facebook account as your justification is fucking disgusting. And since everybody already knows my fucking address, here it is. His whole take on getting docs is canard. He posts his own address on my wife's personal Facebook, you slime ball. And then he posts a picture of my home. What do we have here? Oops. Your publicly posted Wizards of the Coast DCI number. I guess this is what I used when I reported you for disgusting targeted harassment. Now, none of the people that were featured in episode one of Bully Busters have been suspended by Wizards of the Coast. Imagine my shock. That doesn't mean I will ever stop exposing the hypocrisy. You think you're tough, Michael? You think it takes a tough man to stalk somebody's wife's Facebook? Sorry, that one got a little personal. But as you can see, when you bring my wife into it, that is over the line. How about we go on to 
Toxic MTG. I have some investigations going around this Twitter handle, um, and I believe I know who's running it. I can't say publicly yet because I want to, when I, when I release it, I want to be 100% right. Let's see what this person's tweeting about me. These are the definitions of the guy to have sexually assaulted someone in college. I don't know what that means. Let's see what else. Oh, here's, here's a nice one. Jeremy Hambly's terror stops tonight. YouTube, better watch out, Magicate Christmas. I would think this is a pretty targeted threat, something that, of course, Twitter has no problem with. The time of silence and complicity in MTG needs to end. We must rise up as one to purge the undesirables. Oh, and here's, here's, here's my favorite. Apparently doesn't violate any Twitter policies. You have a pretty wife and a cute kitty, Unsleeved Media. Let's hope they stay that way. We have tried asking you nicely to leave magic. Now it's time to play rough. You really brought this on yourself. Sometimes you need to use poison to remove a cancer. I genuinely believe that magic would be better off if every Jeremy Hamley... See these people always use your full name? Supporters stop playing magic. I have zero respect for them and their support and support their removal by any means people deem necessary. We will find you and make sure it's a day you never forget. This is merely the beginning of your new existence, Jeremy Hambly. I'm still here, Jeremy Hambly. Your fear is delicious. Houses are very flammable. White supremacists, alt-right assholes like Jeremy Hambly lists every one of my Twitter accounts, including my business one, doesn't deserve peace, safety, or security. They deserve to be driven into hiding, as do any of their supporters. Seven favorites, by the way. Do not entertain both sidism with Magic Gate. Jeremy is an abusive, harassing piece of garbage trying to ruin magic, make his life hell, make him scared. If you support Magic Gate, maybe consider getting new friends and also punch them. By the way, as I do with all episodes of Bully Busters, I will be uploading all of these screenshots and making them available for you to download should you, should you feel any of these people need to be reported to Wizards of the Coast. Since Wizards of the Coast has told us publicly this is what they want. They want people to report this sort of thing. So that's what I did. And if you feel like you need to do that same thing, everything will be right there and easy for you. And let's get to the good stuff. Should we talk about the pedophiles first or should we talk about uh, how I taught my wife how to troll an idiot? Um, um, let's go with the pedophiles because we're going to want to mix it up and have a little bit of fun. So I exposed, I have now three people, um, that I found, I exposed that the wizards, uh, the magic judge association does not screen any of their judges. These are judges that are in a position of power with largely minors in, you know, they can be alone with them. They, they have direct access to them. It seems like an obvious thing that you'd want to make sure that these people are screened uh, uh, for sex offenders. It took me less than 12 hours to find a level three judge who has been charged with during his time as a judge, and he continues to be a judge, the, the dissemination of photos, videotapes, computer depictions, and films of child pornography and possession of child pornography. This man is a level three judge. He celebrated his five-year judge anniversary on May, in May of 2016. Now, this is a man who, as far as I can tell, continues to be a judge. Uh, the man who reported this judge never received any confirmation that this judge had been eliminated from the program. And as far as I can tell, without telling you his name, he's still a judge. When asked about this, oh, by the way, I have another piece of uh, fun information to share with you. Well, let's go with this first. When asked about this, as a former preschool teacher and big brother to a sister who is loving magic and wants to play in local events, will you guys be implementing a system that does background checks on judges or magic employees? Now, if you want to see the video where I expose them as coming out flat out and saying they don't want to do any background checks, they're not responsible to do any background checks, I will list that video uh, down like in the first comment or something like that because that's kind of a bigger topic. 
I don't want to drop my sister off somewhere unsafe. Thanks. Magic Judges. Understandable. We don't have the ability to vet those that take our rules qualifications. And most don't work with minors. Bullshit. That's a lie. If a judge is to work in such a position, they should clear that with their employer. Uh, advise speaking to your local game store. Um, see, that's the thing. Let's see. Uh, not that I know of. Simply put, we don't run preschools. Uh, this is how uh, they're like offended that people would be, would be concerned about eight or nine or 10 or 11 year old children having, you know, being, having uh, 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 potential offenders having access to these people. Not that I know of. We don't run preschools. Most magic events average 25 plus years old. Bullshit. I've been to plenty of GPs. I see hundreds of people under the age of 18. And at large Grand Prix, I see many kids under the age of 13. Most judges don't work with unaccom unaccompanied with minors. Isn't It isn't something we have resource or need for. So... According to the judges, they have no need to make sure that people in the judge program can pass a very simple offender scan, something that I think you can go to your local police station and do on your own. So magic judges are volunteers. If you can't afford to pay for it, why don't you just say, look, new rule, can't be a judge unless you can pass this test. Go to your local police station and submit your clean background test at your expense. Most people are telling me this sort of thing costs about $20. So even though you can pay your judges in, in expensive foil magic cards, um, the idea that you can't afford it is absurd and a lie. The idea that there's no easy way around to, to, to have your judges be scanned is a lie. They are outright saying they have no interest in making sure pedophiles don't have access to kids. I don't know any other way to put it. That's why the magic, the entire magic judge association is on Bully Busters this week. Disgusting. The game is played by minors, but rare for unaccompanied minors to be at events. We get zero program funding from Wizards. Again, they're obsessed with the, deflecting this. They go on many, many tweets deflecting. I shared a personal conversation that was shared to me uh, the other day on my Unseed Media account where they did the same thing. Deflect, 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 deflect. They know there are judges with criminal past. They know. If they, if they weren't trying to defend them, why on earth would they not just say, you know what, if you want to be a judge, go get your clean black background checked, and when you show up for work that day, have it in your hand. How hard is that? If you haven't done anything wrong, you have zero problem doing this. Everybody agrees with me that this is absurd. Pokemon trainers have to have background checks. How come magic judges don't? And the idea that, well, their parents are around. Yeah, parents aren't with those kids all the time. And you know, when you go to local game stores, there might be three kids. I've walked into my local game store where there's three kids under 10 in there unaccompanied by their parent. It happens all the time. So this is just a deflection. They're trying to minimize the fact that kids are around these judges unattended. And oh, by the way, the Grand Prix that I'll be attending this week, I wonder if Channel Fireball knows this. So Grand Prix Indy, where I'll be attending in three weeks, would, by state law, be required to have clean child abuse clearances for volunteers working with children. Per WOTC and Judge Program's own admission, tournament organizers are responsible for holding these records. So, Channel Fireball, the company that banned me, somebody who says mean things on the internet, from even entering the building. I wonder if Channel, since Channel Fireball sponsors this event, Grand Prix Indy, ergo, they need to be in possession of the judge's certifications when working with minors, they would be in violation of this state law. I wonder if they know that. The entire event could be shut down for criminal negligence or failure to produce such certification when police asked. I wonder if somebody were to ask police to go in there and ask for this. Seems like something a concerned parent might want to ask. This information can be verified via Indiana Child Protective Services, 
Even the local indie YMCA holds and updates. Just passing the check once is not enough validation. The certifications expire after so many years based on the state and must be renewed and kept on file. And it is their best practice as well as compliance with state laws. I spoke with Pam at the Indy YMCA and more information can be found on the CPS Indiana website, Channel Fireball. I wonder why they deflect. And let's finish with kind of a fun one. Now, I've made it pretty clear that people have decided to stalk my wife on Facebook, which is disgusting. I've taken possession of her Facebook because why should she be subject to that? And uh, I taught her yesterday on Christmas Day a little bit about trolling. So this 4 deke hex sent a contact request. Of course, my wife was like, who's this bitch? I clicked on the profile. It was not, it was not clearly a burner account. Just created, no pictures, no nothing. Sends this unsolicited message. Your husband, Jeremy, has been spending his time online lately, sending bizarre th Twitter threats to women and companies over a card game. He has taken to neo-Nazi websites in order to further his influence, and then provides the ever-trusted Encyclopedia Dramatica link. She goes on, just posting tweets, as this is to offend my wife in some way. All uh, right, continuous posting. My wife has not replied. She handed me her phone when she had like a million Spurg messages from this person. Uh, more tweets from me, more tweets from me. Then says, he has gotten more erratic over time. And while hasn't directly threatened violence yet, is making more and more vague threats about action. No, he hasn't. No, proof. Uh, and has, has claimed that he is trailing some tournament in a few weeks and intends to, I don't know how to phrase it, troll them. He has made it clear that he intends to take this into a physical space in the near future. Uh, no screenshot provided, of course. So my wife now replies, oh my gosh, I think I should probably, I think I should leave. All I know is Googling the man's name brings up an article about him harassing college students to the point of breakdowns and the extent of his actions following that should be brought to somebody's attention. To which my wife replies, Wow, thank you for being heroic. You truly are brave to let me know. I'm pretty sure this person knows now that I know it's them. Jeremy clearly intends to ratchet this problem up, our problem of his, to more and more extreme levels. I just hope somebody steps in to stop him from doing whatever he believes he is doing. This seems like an unhealthy way to live. So then my wife says, so contacting his wife directly, someone who isn't part of this, where does that rank? <laughs> Not as bad as you being so scared of people finding out what you're doing online. You rank showing it to your wife as a threat. To which I reply, well, thank you. Glad this is all you have going on today. Christmas. This has been Jeremy the whole time, you idiot. <laughs> and then immediately the person I was sitting there was like, boop, 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 boop. They were like, rage tweet. Yeah, no shit, retard. Jesus, how fucking stupid are you? Oh, no, I should leave. Yeah, you sounded like somebody who knew it was me the whole time when you kept trying to feign, uh, feign concern. Now, you didn't know it was me. You never knew it was me. And neither did the five other people who have contacted her on Facebook, you fuck. I've sent this to Wizards. I don't suspect them to be able to figure out who this is since it's a sock account. But nonetheless, had a little fun with that. So this has been Bully Busters Episode 2. I have reported all of this to Wizards of the Coast. I don't suspect they'll do anything. But I think we should continue to use the program that they've asked us to use in hopes that they might actually not be dishonest fucks. Please, again, do not contact any of these people. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Bully Busters. We'll talk to you again real soon.